core issue here is about Australian jobs and comparing apples with apples. And I've been lobbied um, by all different groups um, and different opinions in this debate. But for us to make good, rational, fair decisions as members of Parliament, we have to have the facts. And I respect the fact that there are different opinions uh, in this debate. But at the end of the day, it all boils down to people. And it all boils down to people having a sense of self-worth and gainful employment. You know, uh, the Prime Minister only recently has said that we're living in very exciting times, you know, challenging times. It's a great time to be in Australia. Well, yes, what the Prime Minister said is right. But that should be for all Australians, equally. No matter who you are, where you live, what's your background, what's your occupation. Now, as I've said, um, I don't place one set of jobs over another. I value all jobs for people, because everybody needs to have a job to look after their families, to contribute to the community, and to their, their individual identity. That's crucial. Now, in this debate, it's a very complex debate and yesterday listening to um, some of the um, de uh, speeches that were given by different senators in the Senate and having listened myself to many points of view I felt unfortunately that some people were only listening to one point of view. So if we don't have Alcoa and if we don't have the Cement Industry Federation um, you know, companies like Borrow and that who are moving Quinker, well we haven't got the bulk commodities to create the jobs for the members of the MUA and the, the officers and the engineers. So they need to be making a quid but you need to be making a quid because when you go down to um, the local IGA and stakes $28 a kilo, if you're getting two dollars an hour, well you'll be lucky to have steak by the time you pay your rates and your and your insurance. That's the reality of it. We live in a high cost country. It shouldn't be a race to the bottom, it should be a race to see how smart we can be and how productive we can be. We can't compete with somebody overseas who gets a bowl of rice and his child doesn't get an education. Or well, their kids are, you know, walking barefoot. And having visited um, the port in Dilly in East Timor, let me tell you, it's chalk and cheese between what they're expected to do and what we want to do here. Now we can, you know, if we're going to race to that, nobody wants that. And none of the people, some of the people that are suggesting that our people are overpaid, they wouldn't want to be popping the conditions that the, the poor budget in East Timor are doing. But it's all relative, but relative to our wages is our standard of living and what's expected of us. And it shouldn't be a race to the bottom. Having got on the ship today, I empathise with the blokes. So I looked into their eyes and I can see that they're worried about their future and that of their families. And, and they're entitled to representation as each and every one of you are, as are the blokes up at the, the smelter here, as are the blokes in the cement industry and wherever else. We're all in this together. It's not about me or you or I, it's about we and how we get better outcomes for all Australians. My job is not to do what is in the interests of somebody overseas. My first responsibility is to do what is in the best interest of all Australians, no matter who they are or where they live. So um, I'm not going to make false promises to you and say that we can solve this overnight, but it's a complex issue. The state government needs to be involved in this issue. The port operators need to be involved in the issue. The tug operators, the cement industry, Alcoa, the government, state, federal, local governments, they've all got a part to play. They're all good at regulating for Australians, but they don't apply the same regulations to the, to the foreign crews. And those poor buggers don't even get, uh, in some cases, what is the measly amount of money that they're offered. Now, it might be relative to their country of origin, but it's not what's done here. And if we want to live a decent life and look after our kids, we can't expect to do it on $2 an hour. It just won't work.
the federal government needs to look at issues. Why is it that a country like Norway, a far smaller landmass than ours, has nowhere near the amount of shipping and depends on shipping like we do to export to the rest of the world like we do? How come we've got such a successful shipping industry and we haven't? Now, I haven't heard that discussed. Like, what are the taxation implications? over in Norway or other countries, do they tax their seafarers like we tax ours? Like, what are the flow-on effects from having Australian maritime workers who come in for the town of Portland or Geelong or Warrnambool or surrounding areas or whether it's Darwin or, you know, Sydney or Melbourne, wherever it may be, but they're not spending in our communities like our workers are. What are the flow on effects for the local sandwich shop, the local tyre service? When we're talking about it, we need to analyse it, we need to be factual. And the government <laughs> needs to have a look. And they need to be innovative. If they're telling us to innovate, they need to be innovative. They need to come to the table. Because as I said, it affects you, it affects these communities, it affects our farmers, our wheat farmers, our miners. Yeah, this is a very complex issue. It hasn't been given the degree of scrutiny and policy uh, formation and the seriousness that's attached to this issue. It hasn't been done. It's been lazy um, policy, I think. Now, I know people get exasperated. They say it's been going on for years. Well, that's what we're paid for as uh, members of parliament. That's what the government's paid to do to do what is in the best interests of Australia and I believe the best interests of Australia is to have as many possible jobs on our shores and to have a strong, vibrant, efficient Australian shipping industry and that's going to take hard work and if we've all got to play our part in this, we've all got to come to the table genuinely and park all the, the past history and the rubbish at the gate and what is, in, what is what are we going to do about it? And that's up to each and every um, person involved in this, in this industry. As I said, the broad reaching implications to all sit down at the table, behave like adults, and do first and foremost what is in the best interest of our country and our people. Thank you very much. Yeah.